Hi, and welcome to the Chicken Chess Club uh, recap of today's round. Uh, just finished uh, a round of golf here in, in, in Vilnius and one of my better rounds, so I'm happy. And uh, just in time to do the recap of uh, game 11 as well, because um, it was a very quick draw today. Anyway, let's have a look. Of course, uh, Neponiachi plays 1e4 as, as always. It's a bit of a question what does Ding does, but he goes back to his basics. So, Spanish and no Berlin. He plays his, uh, well, he wants to allow the Martian. Once again, we see Neponiachi going 6d3, like he did in, in game five of the match, where he won a very convincing game. So, no Rugi one fear redoers like with Magnus, but more trying to play chess. Ding goes b5, bishop b3, d6. And now Neponiachi plays a3. In the previous game, he played c3 and had some pretty impressive preparations from a strategic point there. Now he plays the kind of more main line, which was uh, Kayakin's choice against um, Magnus in the 2016 World Championship match. Kayakin didn't get much, but it's known as a very solid line with minimal chances for white and really not much for black. That probably suits Nepal not too fine here. So they, they play a couple of moves, and I think especially 12 bishop g5 is a bit noteworthy. It becomes uh, very similar to what we saw in um, in Game 5. Nepomniachtchi is trying to aim for the d5 square. And um, I think that, um, well, we saw in that game, it was clear that Ding, after what's said, he thought he was completely fine. But um, Nepomniachtchi seemed to prove that he wasn't. And it was clear that it shook sort of Ding's confidence in understanding this kind of positions that he even started to change, was my feeling. But now he seems to have looked at it again. But, um, well, Nepomir actually tried to do the same thing. And, um, well, I think Castle comes, takes, takes knight d5. Um, g6. I uh, forgot, queen d2, bishop g7. I think some even claim this has been played in title Tuesday. So this is a bit funny, that title Tuesday apparently is where the, the interesting th There the game continued, queen g5. But in this game, they continued knight g5. And it's an interesting move. I mean, a logical move would be something like bishop c8. But should that happen? Well, then, you know, white would continue with f4. And while black has the pair of bishops, um, it's clear that white gets some kind of attack. So Ding choose to play c4 here. This was criticized by former world champion uh, Vichy Anand. He thought now white just get a pleasant position because, as we see in the game, takes takes on e6, knight e3. Somehow this c4 structure well, that blocks the white bishop, it looks like it's going to crumble. And then, you know, the bishop on a2 will stay at the e6 pawn. That is some structural problems. But Ding had a very nice solution. He played bishop a6, a great move, attacking the knight. Then uh, Nepomnachi plays rook a1. And the next move is very cool. He plays rook b8. It's basically sort of prophylaxis. It's just an understanding of that next, um, well, that's what modern whites can do. And when white does, as he does in the game, he takes in c4, you take back with a knight, takes, takes, take on d6, takes, take, takes on e3, takes on f1, takes on b2, a lot of taking here. And, uh, well, you saw why the rook went to b8. You were simply anticipating these things, and now just everything gets swapped, and it's a quick draw. I mean, maybe nominally white has a slight pull at some point here, but it makes absolutely no difference. And the game ends in a quick draw. Um, I don't know who this favors. My guess would be nobody. Of course, you could say it's a zero-sum match, so it has to favor somebody. But I think uh, Nepomniachtchi is happy giving his plus one. Ding is happy limiting the damage and then trying to escalate risks. I mean, next uh, game he's white. He has two whites and one black left. He will probably still try to push, but within reasons. I think we will see scenarios like we saw with the kramnik Leko World Championship match uh, quite some years back, where, well, Kramnik kept pushing and pushing. And then, you know, in game 13, Kramnik played the uh, Benoni. And then in the game 14, he played some weird sideline in the Karakan, simply to get games going. I think we're going to see some things that are similar here. Ding will not want to risk going all out yet, but uh, he will sort of, uh, you know, keeps upping the pressure. But I think um, the next one or two games could still be rather normal games before we will see things go completely crazy in the end. So I think while the last couple of games have been boring, uh, at least in terms of action we were used to, I think we're just postponing the, the fun. The good good, and interesting things going to happen uh, soon in this match, and it's going to be incredibly exciting. So, um, well, uh, enjoy. Time to learn, and we'll see you back in a couple of days. Take good care. Bye-bye.